In this video, I'm going to show you how to deposit a dataset in a repository. I'm using my own institutional archive, which is on the Dataverse platform. I click the new dataset button and a metadata template opens with some, uh, uh, some fields already pre-filled. What I first need to do is to add the title of the dataset. This dataset is replication data for a paper that has been written. So I put the, the prefix replication data for and then the, the title of um, the research paper. Uh, I then add the name of the author. Since uh, this is an institutional archive, the affiliation has already been pre-filled. I then add the name of the contact person, which is in this case is the same as the author and then the email address. Another field that is obligatory is the description field, but I'm going to do that later. But I add today's date. I then uh, going to add the subject. This is a data set in linguistics, so I'm going to click the arts and humanities category. Then keywords are required. Uh, and you need to add minimally one, but what I'm going to do is add as many as relevant. So in this case, I'm adding uh, information about the languages that have been studied, and I'm adding information, well, keywords that are related to the research question. The producer is important because this is the, the, the organization that has the administrative and economic responsibility for the data set. The distributor is the owner of the repository. So I'm saving, I'm saving the data set and now I have already some metadata in place. But I want to add more. So I'm clicking the add and edit metadata button and the metadata template opens once more, but now there are a few more fields available. What I'm first going to do is to add the ORCID of the author. This is a, this is a unique ID um, for this person, which is easy to create on the ORCID website. I'm also going to enter the description, which I've now finished. So I'm adding the information, well, the description about the data set. Uh, what I also want to do is to add the abstract for the paper that is related to this data set. So I'm taking that one too and putting it in a separate field. And just to show what is what, I'm adding a small information in the beginning of the description showing what is the dataset abstract and what is the publication abstract. So this has already been done. So I'm going further down. And I'm going to the related publication field. In this case, um, the, the research paper has been submitted, it has been accepted, and it's about to be published. So I already have all information I need about the bibliographic reference. While I'm writing this, I can also say that in case um, the, the, the research paper hasn't been published yet or it hasn't been accepted by the, the journal, uh, it, that it's only submitted, of course, you cannot write all the information uh, here. You have to wait uh, until um, it's authorized to inform about where um, where the paper has been published.
So this is something that you can, you can. Uh, so when your your paper has been uh, approved, you can ask whether it's okay that you that you put information about the forthcoming publication uh, in this field. Okay. So going further down, another field that I want to draw your attention to is the contributor field. In this case, um, uh, the data set is is uh, is in a in it's from a, um, a, a doctoral project. So I'm an entering information about the supervisor who has been contributing with advice on the data collection. I also uh, add information about the grant agency which has funded this research. In this case, um, uh, the researcher has collected or has, has taken data from two different time periods within the data material. Um, so uh, he has taken data from 1958 to 1970 and also from 2008 to 2020. And this is important for people who want to look at the data to know from which period they come. But the collection of the data, the extraction of the data from, uh, from the primary data happened in 2020. Um, we also want to inform about the kind of data. So these are corpus data. And we also want to inform about the software that has been used to, 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 um, to analyze the data. So I have been using Prot, which is a phonetic and analytical tool, and then the R Studio. And I also inform about the version that has been used. So as you can th th see, there are quite a few fields that, and not every field is relevant for every data set. So you, you just need to get acquainted with the metadata template and decide what is irrelevant. What might be relevant is the geographic coverage of your data. In the case you have data that are taken from a specific uh, geographic location. That is not the case for in this data set. You also have social science and humanities metadata where you can inform about the, the data collection methods and also uh, information about the management of the data. So I'm going to save my changes. And what I'm now going to do is to add files. So I'm in the files tab and I click the button upload files. I click select files to add and I go into my computer and find the folder where I have prepared my data files. So I open them. And as you can see in this repository, you might add a small description for each file, but I decide not to do so in this case. So now I have the, the four files uh, in my data set. I go over my metadata to see that everything is in order. But I'm not done yet. Because as you can see in the versions tab here, it's, my data set is only a draft version. So now I need to proceed to get my data set published. And this differs from one repository to another, how it happens. Um, in this repository, uh, the researcher uh, is not allowed to, to um, publish the data set himself. So he has to send it to curators in the repository who go through the data set and then if everything is in order, publish the data set. <laughs>